All right, everyone, it's time for a little bit of a finale weighing in on the DeSantis thing. Now that he's sub-15, uh, I don't know. When the fundraising dries up, you fire a third of your staff, you can your campaign manager, and you've had to reorient your campaign three times. And you've slipped from a height of uh, about 30 points, which is t totally viable. It was still second place. It was close to 15 points. And you keep losing more support. And you're beginning to get gobbled into by Vivek Ramaswamy, actually, of all people. And to an extent, Pence, he, he actually managed to stabilize despite having one of the biggest political faux pas that I've seen in my lifetime and certainly so far the biggest of this year. Yes, to be clear, DeSantis's so, uh, faux pas were lesser than Little Mikey's. And that's not my concern what goes on in the United States. I'm talking about Ukraine. So yeah, keep focused on the subject. That didn't go over so well. By the way, Biden is now challenging uh, Mike Pence and Ron DeSantis for biggest political faux pas of the year with Maui. Oh, they've, they rushed out ahead of that news cycle for today, now didn't they? Getting Biden to finally address the situation. After all, before it was no comment. Didn't look too good, Joe. Now here's a, I, I prefer a position here. Uh, here's what I would tell the DeSantis fans. It's time to realize that you can keep supporting him through the primaries. It's, it's okay. I don't have a problem with that. You've got your political opinions. I have mine. He's not going to win, but you can continue to support him, and it doesn't, I don't really give a shit. When Trump is inevitably nominated, unless he dies or something like that, or he's completely flatlined by every state deciding he's not allowed to be on the ballot, in which case DeSantis has a path forward, uh, the problem is he then would subsequently lose in a landslide election. And uh, so would any other GOP candidate. Wouldn't matter right now if you revived first-term Ronald Reagan and ran him in the primary if Trump is taken out. It effectively has become Donald Trump or nothing, and I'll tell you why. The core Trump fan base within the GOP, so this is a, a portion of Republicans, is estimated by some people to be around 25%, others up to 35 I personally see it as a bit closer to 40 uh, based on long-term polling averages from RCP. I say upper 30s is plausible, I think 40, 41, somewhere around there. So nearly half of Republicans, or at the very least a quarter of them, are really hardcore MAGA. That is, uh, many of these people, by the way, there, there are also people that are hardcore MAGA that aren't Republicans at all. Uh, I stand with MAGA and populism. I intend to vote for Trump. I've never been a Republican. I've never registered with a political party. Uh, I, I'm not even a conservative. Uh, there are some issues on which I disagree with Trump on uh, as a result of this. The same is true of any other candidate. I don't really have a full-on political home in the partisan sense because my views, uh, they're not partisan at all. You know, on gay marriage, people assume that I'm a leftist if I talk about that. If I posted anonymously about all of my political views on a forum or something like that, people would have absolutely no clue how to categorize me. <laughs> they, 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 everyone would hate me, probably, because I have one view that they happen to hold a visceral hate of or something, because they're lock, stock, the barrel, uh, rock-ribbed Republican, or, hey, I'm a total left oil, a uh, breadliner, or something like that. It's funny. As long as I limit what I talk about, I can get along with pretty much anyone. But if I give them my full platform, everyone hates. This is why I wouldn't bother running for office unless it were some echo chamberville that I happen to be in. And then I'd have to publicly clarify my positions and swing wildly to the side on at least a couple of issues. In other words, I'd have to lie to people in order to get fucking elected mayor, probably. Anyway, Donald Trump is the only chance he got. Because the majority of those people will stay home on election day or write in Donald Trump if he's not the nominee. That's effectively the Republican Party has two choices, and for the unipartyists, they've clearly already made theirs. For the lay Republicans, it's a little bit different. You can either begrudgingly accept that Trump is virtually certain to be the nominee and stand your ground against a system that's attempting to stop him, or you can go with the uniparty line. You can allow the whole thing to collapse, basically. You can nominate somebody else who has no hope of winning and lose in a landslide election. Showing the uniparty for what it is, there are plenty of Republicans who would rather alienate a significant proportion of their own electorate to stop Donald, to stop Orange Man, than simply accept that the will of the people that comprise that party, by and large, is to nominate Donald Trump. He's got more than 50 points of support. He's above 50%. The majority of people within the GOP want him. 
He's also got support among a minority of independent voters. I like how this line gets trotted out. Trump can't win because he loses with independent voters. That's not necessarily true. Of course, the polling could change. Now, I think that a 10-point swing among independent voters is more likely than a 40-point swing in favor of Ron DeSantis in the primaries. Considering that getting indicted with multiple felonies doesn't seem to st even slow Trump down, it actually accelerates him. I'd say that some people at this point will vote for Trump even if he dies. They'll vote for his goddamn skeleton to be accelerationist. So you've got the accelerationists, you know, they're climbing back on board the Trump train right now, which I find hilarious because they pretended to be so pissed at him before. You've got some independent voters, you've got the MAGA core, most Republicans in the end, I think, you got to understand the differential. Donald Trump is the, is the charismatic. He's the man who has hardline core support. He has less soft support than a traditional candidate, which we have to acknowledge, but much more hardened support. A person like DeSantis can have more soft support, but that means lower turnout. Also, he doesn't have that much of a hardened core. Again, he's already fallen below where he started out when polling began before he even got into the race having very unwisely decided to get in at exactly the wrong moment instead of getting in a few months earlier or sitting it out. He shows a lack of strategic patience, by the way. Trump's hardened fan base is less likely than the much softer fan bases of any other candidate to, to it is much more likely to refuse to vote or to write in someone who's not the nominee if their nominee is not the person that they want. That's just the long and short of it. So you either accept the situation that you're in. Uh, I suppose DeSantis fans at this point have been reduced to praying that Donald Trump dies. I, as, as some of you have TDS so badly, I wouldn't put it past you to actually be actively. You have a little altar there with a black candle on it. Oh, please, Trump, please go away. Mike Pence, 2024. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hysterical when they make those claims. But I'm sorry to burst your bubble. Something much worse will happen if Donald Trump is not the nominee. Again, unless if he dies or something, then the MAGA fan base will probably vote for the nominee, except a few really hardliners. Like I've said, if Trump were to die, then I'm looking at a field, I'm saying, well, I hope that somebody halfway decent is there because the only truly qualified candidate's gone. <laughs> the, the problem is that it doesn't just affect the presidential election now, does it? That damage will trickle down ballot in the most catastrophic way. The Democrats, if basically you've either got Trump or you've got a triple Democrat supermajority led by a puppet vegetable. Those are your choices, fellow, uh, fellow uh, MAGA. <laughs> Those are your choices. Uh, I mean, I, would, I can't say fellow Republicans, so I sort of have to put myself in some in-group. So to the DeSantis fans, and the fans like little Mikey and Chris Christie and stuff, they're not going to win. Uh, the race is basically over. And some of you think that that means that the general's over. Oh, we've already lost. Well, again, with Trump, you have a chance. And at the very least, down ballot in the Senate, things are looking much more rosy. Uh, you don't have any chance. I think you lose the House by 50, 60 seats, the Senate by five or six, and the presidency if you go with DeSantis. And he would probably fare the best of all of the other also ran simply because he, he does have a core of support. The TDS suffers. Uh, I mean, you're nuts not to go with Trump. The people have effectively spoken within the GOP. And again, that also includes people like myself who I'm not going to vote straight Republican. I'm not going to vote. Like, I, I wouldn't vote for a fucking Mitt Romney Republican or something like that or an evangelical unless I had no other option, I suppose. I can, I can tolerate Bulbert. You know, she's got some wonky religious views. We've gotten to the point where the Republican Uniparty is so bad, people like Sarah Palin look more palatable. And <laughs> that's uh, really something to them. It comes hard to a millennial like me. That's about all. Peace out.